Hello, parents. This is Ruben Jones, principal of Diamond Bar High School, and I'm here with our athletic directors and our uh, athletic trainer. And we want to bring you an important message of uh, some updates about COVID-19. So parents, we want to remind you that everything that happens with athletics, it, it involves with organizations that help govern our activities. So the NFHS, the CIF Southern Section, and of course, our, our public health, our county public health. These bodies govern us and give us rules to help keep our athletes safe. And so you can see there, we, we wanna emphasize that working together closely with these bodies is where we get our guidelines and, and the expectations for moving forward for all things athletics. There's a, an Appendix S is the name of the document that we are, are following. And so right now that Appendix S is posted in the comment section below. You can, you can click on it and you can review it, the document if you wanted to look at the guidelines that we're following. But everything we have here is written down for us to move forward. The goal of the guidelines that we receive from the county is to enhance the safety of our student athletes and to lower the risk of spreading COVID transmission. We know to do that, there's four key areas, uh, vaccination, screening, which involves testing, as well as looking at symptoms of COVID, wearing our masks and keeping social distance. We're gonna focus on those four areas throughout this presentation and, and all the activities that we have on campus. We wanna emphasize and highlight that masks are required indoors, including competition. Again, these are the current guidelines that we have as, of, as starting tomorrow, that masks will be required indoors uh, for athletic competition and practice. And then the last point we wanna we want to highlight is that everything that we have is also following an exposure management plan that involves contact tracing and making sure that if there is COVID-19 on campus, that we can know how to manage it and we can keep our campus safe. Next up, I wanna introduce Chase Paulson to give some details about vaccination status. Chase. Good morning, parents. In this new updated Appendix S, changes have been made with the rollout of the vaccine and the number of individuals that have uh, been vaccinated recently. We are now seeing a little bit of a divide between those that are vaccinated and unvaccinated in the testing requirements. And with the new guidelines coming out for Appendix S, there is a, a split between unvaccinated and vaccinated athlete requirements. For those athletes that are unvaccinated, the Appendix S is requiring weekly testing to be completed within 72 hours of competition or once a week if the athlete is out of season. Fully vaccinated athletes are not required to test. However, they must submit proof of their vaccination or they will test. They can submit a proof of their vaccination card, which a photo is okay with their ID, in the Google form that follows this video. Now, one update for these two uh, vaccinated and unvaccinated states is that if we do end up having a positive test on any athletic team, the entire team will be required to test once a week for two weeks, regardless of vaccination status. Now, if an athlete has been tested positive for COVID-19 and fully recovered, there is a 90-day exemption. Because COVID-19 antibodies are still present, there is no testing needed for those athletes. Once 90 days after a positive test has occurred, unvaccinated athletes must then resume testing. All right, uh, to kind of reiterate, uh, starting September 1st, which is tomorrow, all high and moderate sports teams must take a COVID test each week and those tests must be within 72 hours of a competition. So if your uh, student athlete has two games in a week, it's quite possible they may need to test twice in a week if they're not vaccinated. And with the sports that just have one game a week, then obviously it would just be testing one week. On the right side here, we can see the sports that we're talking about. We've crossed off the ones that don't uh, pertain to us, but uh, we've still got badminton, baseball, even though we're not in season, these teams are still practicing and they need to be tested. Cheerleading, softball, tennis, just the doubles. And uh, because of some of the transitions with tennis, uh, may or may not have testing involved. Volleyball, basketball, football, uh, soccer, water polo, and wrestling. All of these sports will be tested at least once a week. So some testing information. If you need to be tested, it's going to be offered three times per week. 
to get tested, you need to have an athletic clearance completed. You can do that on athleticclearance.com and find the instructions on dbhssports.org. There are two forms that you will need to turn in each time that you test, the consent to treat form as well as a student information form. When you arrive to have your testing completed, you will turn in these two forms to the testing administrator and then your test will be completed. These are the what the two forms look like. On the left, you have the authorization to treat a minor. That is just simply name and parent signature. And on the right, there is some basic identification. Um, this is the paper that will be attached to the sample so we can identify which sample belongs to which student. So when athletes come to testing, what can they expect during the process? Testing will be done on campus in room 118, and it will be an antigen test. So it is a nasal swab. Teams will be assigned a time slot during their athletic period or during their practices after school for testing. Please ensure that all forms have been printed and signed. Okay, thank you very much, Chase, for sharing those details about testing. Parents, the LA County Health Department is, is takes confidentiality very serious, and they've set strict guidelines for us. So only school administration are gonna have the results of these um, COVID tests that are taken. And the, if there is a positive result that is, that is done in the testing, uh, the individual family that is, is positive will be notified by uh, the Brea Urgent Care, as well as by our school administration team. So again, we wanna clarify, this information is, is confidential. We will keep it that way. Your privacy is very important to us. And, and most importantly, we are, we are excited that we can be together and we can still compete. Uh, athletics is important to all of us. And uh, from our head coaches, to our athletic directors, to our teachers, to our community, we're excited that we can still compete. And uh, in these guidelines, we're gonna follow them. Um, every, every single in instruction that's provided by the LA County Health Department. So parents, thank you again for your attention. Um, please make sure and complete the Google form showing that uh, you've watched this video. That will be, uh, that will be our measurement to know that this information has been shared with you. So thank you again for your attention. And with that team, any last words? Go Brahmas. Go Brahmas. Go Brahmas. Go Brahmas.